How are you? My name is Minha Kim and I am from Korea. Cool. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me. Of course. Me. Yes. Well, it's about the, um, it's really about Robert Oppenheimer, who was the, um, the father of the atomic bomb, the scientist who was the director of the Manhattan Project. And so it follows really his entire life, you know, and flashes around different parts of his life and the people who were important in his life. And um, Emily plays his wife, and I played the general who, who ran the Manhattan Project and helped facilitate his his brain and uh and and all you know this all these scientists and thousands of people who came together to to build the atomic bomb which obviously changed the course of history mm -hmm. and we still live with its repercussions today yeah. <laughs> what was your first impression when you read the script what brings you in i found it really heart racing and really emotional i thought going into it that i would be overwhelmed with not understanding the physics and the science but you realize that that's really just the backdrop of it this is about this man's pursuit, and it, it was written in the first person. So instead of Oppenheimer walks across the room, Oppenheimer does this, it was like, I walk across there, I see her across the room, I see these colors, these things, and you're just like immersed in this man's brain for the whole script. It was very emotional, it was so human, mm -hmm. even though, yes, it's about this this titanic idea of this bomb that could change the world, that did change the world. It's about this, about the man who created it and what that life is like living with that creation. It was just stunning. Is that the reason why you mentioned it as a thriller? That you yeah, was it, it, it unfolds like a thriller to me. It feels mm -hmm. like a horror movie. It's, mm -hmm. It leaves people feeling kind of distraught. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that style that Chris Nolan used makes it so far from being a biopic, it's so far from it because of the style, you know, and the energy behind it. Well, Chris was very clear um, about what he wanted and what he needed and, and how it was all going to be based around Killian and, and that performance. And th that was really beautiful to watch Killian and Chris together collaborate. And they really partnered to make this this character, this the Oppenheimer character, um, because the movie, the movie really doesn't work unless you are with Oppenheimer emotionally the entire time. So for us, it was an issue of all right, as actors, okay, um, you know, if it's a painting, then I'm 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 one of the colors, right? So where do you need this color, and where where do you you know, and and, and that was just about talking to Chris, you know, who's so communicative and great mm. about you know, uh, here's what this scene is about, here's what I'm looking for, here's how you can help. Um, because our job was really to support Killian. Killian, yeah, and 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 the story. For Emily, um, according to your previous interviews, and as an audience throughout the screen, I could feel a great affection towards the characters that, uh, the Katie Offenheimer. But you once mentioned that it was very challenging for you to elaborate her. What? Part of Kitty made you say this. What was the biggest challenge of you? The biggest challenge, challenge of for of, you of to. Um, elaborating her. I mean, to be honest, I I will say I, I always find a character challenging. I don't feel Kitty was um, different in that way. I always have this sort of determination in me taking someone on to feel possessed by that person, however different they might be than me. I thought she was such a fireball and so exciting and sort of that refusal in the character to conform to the ideal of the time for women. It was just really, she was very unusual for the time and modern. I just wanted to make sure that she was, that I played her in the way that she was written. She was a pretty monumental presence in his life and a confidant for him. But for me, she's not the archetypal sort of Lady Macbeth. You could kind of go there and think that she might be that. I think you've also got to consider the fact that this woman gave up any kind of um, intellectual ambitions of her own, and she had many and was capable of much. And what does that trauma look like of sort of going to waste doing household chores, really, um, in support of your husband? and? I just felt for her. I had so much empathy for her. I know a lot of women like that mm -hmm. in their, you know, 60s and 70s, the generation ahead of, like, few, a few generations ahead of me and Matt, who, who really, 
it was a different time for women and they let a lot go and they were defined by being a mother and it wasn't enough for them and that's okay, it's okay to say that. So I just had a lot of empathy for her as well, I think. Then um, did you find any connection between you and... About me and her? Yeah. Not really. Really, really. <laughs> you parent similarly. I sort of parent similarly. <laughs> quite, quite cold and like, yeah. Just <laughs> no, I, I don't feel I'm very similar to her, but I know a couple of people who I sort of pulled from. Yeah. But more of empathy, right? I, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. I get it. What's that isolation and loneliness out in mm -hmm. Los Alamos? And I think, what else was there to do but drink and party? Yeah. You know. There was a lot, there was a massive logistical uh, undertaking, but I think, you know, he said this, the smartest decision that he made was, was deciding on Oppenheimer as his director. Um, that changed the course of history for sure. And he was very proud of that and of the logistical elements of, of what they did. It, 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 was such, it was such a massive project and required so, so much coordination and, and uh, you know, I think he, he, he had a very clear sense of mission and, and um, was really proud of um, the fact that they accomplished what they set out to accomplish. So, um, you know, it, it was interesting playing somebody who, you know, for this part of his life was very sure of uh, uh, absolutely everything he was doing. But don't you think it was kind of confusing for him because he was not a scientist? He's a soldier. For sure. And so that was the, the real tension that existed, right, was was the military always wants more secrecy. They want compartmentalization. You know, everything's on a need-to-know basis. Whereas the scientists think the exact opposite. They think, no, we're trying to get to the truth, so we need to share information. We need to help each other. And so there was this tension all the time between, between the military and between the scientists. And so, and so the script did a really good job of teasing that out and showing how frustrating it was for Groves. You know, he felt like a kindergarten teacher most of the time. He was like, these guys, they won't listen to me. They won't, I'm, you know, you can't share this information. This is, this is life or death. This is the fate of the world we're talking about. But I think they liked each other. What you and Killian portrayed was so lovely is that your character happens to be sort of warm and cold all at once. Right. And I don't know how you did it. It was so clever. They really, but they, and I think they really liked each other. They genuinely did like yeah, each other. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, ultimately, despite the fact that they were different. But the scientists in general drove Groves Insane. crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for sure. I think uh, the word that you chose that uh, you were being like a teacher of the kindergarten was <laughs> so accurate because like, everyone doesn't listen to what he's saying, even but though it's, it's it, so it, important. And he didn't care if he was liked, mm -hmm. right? He didn't mm -hmm. care if they thought yes, he was yes, nice. Yes. Like, that was not one of his objectives. Mm -hmm. He really didn't mind telling that them what he role. thought. That was his role. That was his the, role, yeah. He, he, his job was much more important than how people felt about him. And he was, he was disliked by all of the scientists, mm -hmm. and he didn't care at all. Wow. Yeah. Uh, can you please say hi to the Korean audience? Sure, yeah, yeah, Which yeah. Which camera? Hello to everybody in hi Korea. Hi, Korea. We hope you love our movie, Hi, Korea. We hope you love it. 